Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Card and Payment Expert. I know many of you were really disappointed with the poor video quality of the first two chapters on my YouTube channel. And you have been asking me several times on LinkedIn, YouTube, if I can recreate those two chapters. And I'm really sorry, please accept my apologies that it took me so long to finally address your concern. But today, let me try to give you a better visual experience. I will quickly switch to my whiteboard and then get started. We will start with the basics. Before we get into the payment terminologies, what is issuer, acquirer, card network, processor and all, I would request you to first of all understand the user journey. And for that reason, let's assume that you yourself is an acting, acting as a card holder and you are visiting a merchant outlet. Okay. So let's try to put yourself into a situation that you are carrying a card it can be a credit or a, or a debit card, whatever it is. And then you are visiting a merchant outlet, which can be a supermarket, restaurant or any fuel pump, right? So here you are, you are a card holder. Now you're visiting a merchant outlet. There are a variety of payment channels which are available. Okay, you can use your card on a point of sale terminal, ATM, e-commerce, IBR, even in the in-app transaction also you can perform. So ultimately, you just need to understand how you are initiating your transaction and how a merchant is accepting the payment. Okay, so now you as a card holder, maybe you're swiping in, dipping in, tapping your card or manually entering a card on a website. So you're providing your card details so that a merchant can initiate a transaction. This is where we are. So when a transaction is initiated from any kind of terminal, whether it's a physical terminal or a virtual terminal, so Virtual terminal means if you are using your card and any of the online website, it can be Amazon, Zomato or Swiggy, right? So you are entering your card data over there. So those terminals are called actually a virtual terminal. Physically, those terminals doesn't exist unlike point of sale or ATM, correct? So all those are virtual terminals. That's what just, just for understanding purpose. You must be having a bank name written on your plastic card. If you have your credit card in your pocket, maybe you can take it out, just read the name of the bank or you should know who, who is the issuer of your bank, from which bank basically you have got this card, right? So that bank name is written on your card. So now I'm assuming like your card belongs to bank A. So bank A is there. There is a possibility, the point of sale or the website where you're entering the card data doesn't necessarily, that particular merchant belongs to your bank A. Correct, that can be a bank B or can any can be any other bank who is accepting, who is providing this payment options or a payment channel so that a merchant can accept the payment. So that is why I have written here payment facilitator. So the bank B here is a payment facilitator. They are facilitating your payment so that it can be basically forwarded to your issuer, right? So you initiated a transaction and where you initiate the transaction that particular merchant or the payment channel doesn't belong to your bank A. Okay, now I will take a pause here and I will explain you. I think one of the example I've taken in my previous win, uh, video also, I will take the same example here so that you can understand the difference between bank A and bank B first of all. Let's assume this is your building. Will you stay? Okay, this is your building and now what happens you are staying somewhere on maybe you know there are multiple stories or floors over there and you are on maybe your fifth floor you are staying on fifth floor and within your flat you have maybe three rooms or four rooms you have multiple rooms so you belong to this particular flat in your building now this is the lift this is the lift now what what, what i want you to understand here is when you want to move from one room to another room okay within your flat within your premises it would be very unlikely that on the same floor you are taking any lift you are just walking by and entering other room and coming out correct so think of this like this is your bank A because you belongs to this flat, your card belongs to this building, right? To this particular floor. 
So this is your bank A. You can correlate this one. Now, let's suppose you want to come down or you want to go upstairs, wherever it is, okay? Or maybe you want to meet your neighbors. So, whenever you're meeting your neighbor, you you may take this lift and then you come down. This is your maybe third floor or second floor, whatever it is. So you came to second floor to meet your friends, to meet your uh, neighbors. So what are you doing here? Now let's try to link this scenario with this particular example. This is bank B I can say. Let's call this as a bank B. When you are doing a transaction at a merchant store, that particular merchant store doesn't belong to you. Correct. So this flat doesn't belong to you. It belongs to someone else. When you want to go your own flat, either you're taking staircase or maybe you're taking a lift, whatever it is, right? So there is another thing that you're using. There's another medium here. So what is that in this above diagram, in this diagram, what is that? So when you are at second floor or a ground floor, which flat doesn't belong to you means you are at a merchant store right now. But this merchant doesn't belong to your issuer processor. Correct. So if it doesn't belong to your issuer, how can you reach or how your transaction can directly reach to your issuer? This is the question. Now, when you swipe your card or you use your card number here, it goes to the payment facilitator or I will call it as an acquirer for now, which is bank B. Bank B will check the card number or maybe a lot of other information. They first of all verify the merchant detail, terminal details whether this merchant support this transaction or not. So they will do a list of, you know, checks would be there. They would be doing all those checks one by one. So if all the merchant related checks are done at an acquiring system, basically they're gonna check the bin number. They cannot identify whether this bin belongs to your bank. They have just the range of your card. So you have 16 digit card number printed on your plastic. The first six or eight digit there was a mandate recently, you know, the card scheme network starts supporting because of ISO has introduced this. So now the, the bin range has been extended from 6 to 8. So that's why. Let's assume like in your 16 digit card number, the first 6 or the first 8 digit is a bin range. So based on that bin and bin ranges, okay, that's actually a bin, not a bin range because bin range becomes when you have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 0 0 something like that or maybe 9 9 9 9 9 so it's just a bin range right so based on your card number the acquiring bank can identify at least this particular card belongs to which particular card scheme network so card scheme network is representing or I would say in this scenario, this lift is representing the card network here, right? So in order for your transaction to reach your issuing bank, this particular acquirer is forwarding your request to the card network, correct? And then card network, they have the detail of your issuing bank, issuing bins, everything they have uh, with them. So what they are gonna do is, they are gonna simply pick up your bin number, will identify the issuer bank, and they will they will also perform maybe there is a list of checks again after performing all those verifications some on behalf services there are a lot of things right so they will identify this particular card belongs to which bank they will get to know okay this is bank a so then finally the transaction will be routed to the issuer bank so once it reaches to your bank your bank has all your data right your your name address a lot of things are there financial uh, all the financial uh, balances that you have all monetary checks and all the security authentications okay whether the card is correct expiry is correct whether your card is active or not and then all the card holder related whether you enter pin or not okay what kind of card holder verification is required and then what is the card verification cvv values if you are from a payment domain Okay, you would understand these terminology, card holder verification method, CVM, CVB, whatever I'm, uh, you know, taking different names right now. But let's suppose you don't belong to this uh, uh, payment domain and you're watching it first time. This, you're, you are actually a beginner in payment domain. So nothing to worry about it. Okay. But the only thing you have to understand is 
when your transaction reaches to the issuer processor or any issuing bank which is an issuer of your card they're gonna perform a lot of checks on your card okay so they're gonna verify you first of all they're gonna verify whether this card is active or not whether this is a valid card or not so and they're gonna verify you means like a card holder with the help of your pin data so maybe the point of sale you're entering your pin or maybe you're entering your otp if it is an e-com transaction so by all these means the an issuer bank is trying to validate a card holder so they are performing card related checks they are performing card holder related checks they are performing monetary checks monetary checks means whether you have sufficient fund or not is there any limit on your card can you withdraw this much money in a day can you perform this much transaction or these many transaction from a point of sale or from an e-commerce e-commerce merchant right so all those kind of verifications they're going to perform the issuer bank is going to perform so once they are through these all long list of verifications if you have sufficient fund all your checks are successfully done finally they're going to send a response back to the network network is again going to identify uh, the response and then finally it reaches to your point of sale so if you are swiping your card on a point of sale this is when a merchant can see an approval code on the point of sale maybe if you are new to the industry you can closely look at the uh, you know point of sale device so there will be an approval code printed so this gets printed or this gets displayed on the point of sale only when your transaction is approving otherwise you will see a message processing so when you are seeing a message you know displayed on the point of sale is processing it eventually means your transaction is throughout the network it's getting routed from acquirer to car skin network to issuer finally comes back to the merchant so all those things electronically actually happens in the system in your back end okay when you swipe your card or use your card anywhere whether in e-commerce website or an atm or a point of sale these are some standard rules which happen now the question here is in this scenario we are assuming your card you as a card holder the 16 digit number does not belong to bank b we are assuming that it belongs to a different bank so why do you need this card network why do you need this acquirer if let's suppose here also you have bank a and there also you have bank a in both the scenario this is a question that you should ask yourself right now i'm gonna cover this one also but first of all try to understand the scenario here what we understood here is bank a and b both are two different entities those are two different financial institutes correct where one of the bank is providing acquiring services a payment facilitator and the other bank is providing a card services card processing services right card issuance services so both the banks are different look at the two scenarios mentioned over here in both the scenario you are acting as a card holder yourself okay and you are visiting in scenario a a supermarket in scenario b you are visiting a fuel pump so the first scenario we already covered in this case this supermarket as a merchant belongs to bank b so merchant is a customer of bank b so the payment facilitator is different from the card processor or the card issuer because your card issuer is bank a right so in this case when you trigger a transaction initiate a transaction at this merchant it goes to bank b to acquire uh, sorry bank b who is acting as an acquirer then goes to card network and issuer this mode of transaction is generally called as offers transaction this is offers for issuer bank a why because the issuing bank a card is being used on a merchant who is not facilitated by them it is facilitated by a third party or maybe a third bank or another bank right they are not facilitating this particular transaction because this merchant doesn't belong to them that is why we are calling it as an offers for the issuing bank whereas in this case let's assume this fuel pump you are visiting now again you are a card holder you are visiting a fuel pump okay that merchant belongs to bank a now so when that merchant belongs to bank a means even the payment is being facilitated by the same bank who owns the card so so the entity who owns the card who is the issuer as well as the acquirer it is same okay so when it is same ideally you are at your own home you are just moving from one room to another room so why do you need a lift you don't need a lift right 
there's no such requirement to have a lift when you are moving from one room to another room so this is just one acquiring channel I can say this is one of the acquiring channel of bank A which is being used it can be point of sale or e-commerce and that acquiring channel is pushing the transaction okay to the uh, to the issuing channel of the same bank so merchant is pulling when I'm saying pushing means just transaction is being pushed otherwise don't get confused between a push and pull payment this is an example of pull payment because merchant is pulling the payment from the card holder account but why I'm saying this transaction is pushed basically this is within the same bank okay so the same bank is first of all acting as, a, as an acquirer here and then he should so potentially when this bank A receives the transaction from the fuel pump merchant they identify their own bin they know their bin because they are the owner of that particular bin which has been assigned by any card scheme network right so they can check the bin number based on the bin they will say boss this is our own card doesn't really need to go outside our network so they will not send it to card scheme network they will simply send the transaction to the issuing host any authorization host maybe they are using and that's how the transaction will get processed and the response will come so this scenario called is owners why own us that's the question why because let me just explain you in one or two sentences the merchant or the channel the payment channel who is facilitating this particular transaction to happen this payment channel as well as the card both belongs to the same entity that is why it is on us we are not sending it outside our network so the payment facilitator as well as the issuer owner we are one entity we are not two different entities right so this is why it is called on us i remember many of you asked me a lot of question about card processor what is a card processor how a card processor can differentiate between on us and off us if acquirer and issuer both are being processed by one acquire or uh, one processor so this was one of the question i think in one of my a, a video somebody has asked me so let me try to give an answer here now think of it bank a and bank b both bank a and bank b whereas bank b is an acquirer bank a is a has an issuer and bank a is also doing the acquiring so the same scenario same example we will take and this bank a and b acquiring of bank b is with this third party processor so bank b sitting here for acquiring dependencies so this can be a third party company i cannot take any name here but if you are from the payment background you know there are many big players those who provide acquiring as well as issuing services as a processor so they are providing as a you know software as a services or platform as a services let's not again get into all those terms but a processor those who are out there in the industry they are providing acquiring as well as issuing services so what i'm calling it out here is this bank B is a customer of a third party company who is providing acquiring facilities for this bank B so bank B is sitting here now bank A bank A acquiring is also here with the same processor it is also possible right I have a company for example bank B is and my acquiring customer bank A is my acquiring as well as issuing customer so A is an acquiring customer of the same third party company and even the issuer also. So the issuing part is also with the same processor. Now what will happen in case of owners and offers boss? That's a, I don't know, million dollar question or not, but many people are confused. I can help you understand here. Now for the first scenario. When this third party processor or facilitator will receive a transaction from this merchant. Okay, this merchant is supermarket is there and fuel pump is also with them right because bank a and b both acquiring is with them scenario number one when you are using your card at a supermarket because this acquiring bank is a customer of this third party processor this transaction will hit their acquiring system this processor now by looking at the bin range they can easily identify they have the bin already available with them as an issuer so because that bin is registered with them because because the bank A is an issuing customer also but still there are so many business clauses which does not allow them which may or may not to be very honest because if there is any proprietary agreement between bank A and B okay both of them can process their 
you know honest transaction or office transaction in a closed loop but i'm assuming right now there are no business closed there are no business agreement between bank a and bank b both are two different entities so when this transaction from supermarket is received by this card processor who is also the issuer a kind of issuer processor for bank a they will identify this transaction okay they will understand yeah this bin belongs to bank a but still they cannot process it in offline in or oh, sorry in closed loop they cannot do that there, there's no such agreement so they have to route this transaction still route this transaction to card network card network will identify yeah this is well uh, you know bank a card they will again send this request so this is request only so the request is coming back so now when they receive this lag this is the issuing lag basically earlier they received acquiring they send this acquiring out, outgoing transaction to card network they finally re again they are receiving it back from them because they themselves are the issuer processor so now when they receive it from card network they will say okay now this particular transaction belongs to bank a so they will approve this transaction and when they approve it when they approve it ultimately response also has to go where from where they receive the request they receive request from card network so when they are done with the transaction they have to send a response back they send a response back again to card network now finally card network where card network was sending a response look at here request will go to here 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 then again response back here so card network is sending to acquirer again who is acquirer same processor so this came back so now finally they receive a response they will check okay this was a transaction which was initiated from bank b to bank a although we are the same processor they will finally send a response back here so how many steps are there in general if you think about it one two three right then four five six so how many are there one two three four five six total six right so six steps were there in case of offers six steps are here i hope this is clear if it is not clear you can watch the video again but i think i have tried to make it very simple for you guys to understand now let me move to the another scenario quickly on a when this fuel pump you know sending a transaction to the acquirer they will be able to identify the processor will be able to identify okay this particular transaction belongs to bank a only so the acquirer and the issuer both are same this time they will not send this transaction to card network because they are authorized to process this transaction in closed loop so they will receive this transaction let's assume this is a bank a acquiring engine and this is bank a issuing engine issuing host within the same processor so what they're going to do they will check this particular bin belongs to bank a bank a is acquirer they will send the request here okay a will process the response send to back send it back to them and then came here so step number one sending request to processor identify this as an owner's transaction or a closed loop transaction sending it to the issuing host within the same processor sending a response back step number three and four come here step number one right this bank a first of all yeah supermarket to bank a acquiring same thing then this will send here step number two this is basically acquiring engine this is issuing engine issuing engine will send a response step number three step number four so there are also four steps with this last piece of information about third party processor and uh, payment facilitator i think i'm done with the remaking of the first two chapter and additionally i was trying to answer all the questions related to payment processor uh, whichever you might have asked uh, through my youtube or linkedin channel thank you so much for watching this video another thing that i wanted to say is like i will try my level best to improve the frequency of creating and uploading more videos in future till the time stay connected stay safe thank you so much bye bye